Welcome into the WSN podcast, The Three Wise Men. I'm Danny Holbrook, joined by Nate Garlock and Miles Holiday. And our special guest today is head coach Billy Lawrence from the Lima Senior Spartans. Guys, how was your weekend? Not as good as Coach Lawrence is. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still scoring touchdowns. Right? <laughs> He's adding up the points. We can't go that high. Coach, congratulations on a huge win over Marion Harding, 49-24. Your kids are playing fantastic. You got them at 3-0. Well, I appreciate that. Yep, they're playing hard and doing a great job, and I'm very proud of our coaches and our team. Hey, Coach, this is a, a battle against Marion Harding that is long storied, right? Uh, how was that a theme all week long? Knowing that this is something that you, these two schools have played forever, and is it important to the guys knowing that there's tradition in that game? Well, definitely there was, and it made us focus after coming off the Finley game. You know, we wanted to make sure we didn't have a letdown after a big rival win there. Um, but, you know, it did keep us focused, and uh, we had a great week of practice and uh, had a good Friday night. You know, Coach, it's year two, right? You, you came over, you took over a program. You had to put your own identity, your own stamp on this team. You, you knew that you had the athletes, but it's never easy coming into a, a new school and having to kind of revamp it in a mold of your own. And you've done it very quickly. You came in in year one, you, you win the TCAL. Now here we are in year two, you're 3-0. and You guys beat Finley a week ago, which the last two years, the Lima Senior hadn't even scored a point against them. You guys are putting up big numbers. Janias Hall, over 600 yards, throwing seven touchdowns. Boog Wilson is putting up video game numbers week in and week out. It has been so impressive, the start that you guys have been in. How, how difficult has this turnaround been to get from where you took over to where you guys are right now? Well, it was a whirlwind um, at the beginning, but, you know, we have phenomenal support from Mrs. Ackerman and our principal, Darnell uh, Collins and Mr. Zell. They've done a great job of being there for us and supporting us all the way through. But, you know, in year one, you're trying to get all your systems in place and get all those things organized that you want to do from pregame to Thursday walkthroughs to how you do Mondays, all of that. So now you're in year two. Now you're just polishing up on a little bit of that. And the guys know how we do things. So it's getting a little easier. Um, but it's been a it's been a crazy first three weeks for sure. Coach, when you, when you interview a place like Lima Senior and you tell them, hey, look, this is what I can do. This is what I've done over the years. This is my experience. If the kids believe in me, it, it's going to work. Well, guess what? It's working. I mean, how do you how do you temper the kids' enthusiasm when they when you look? They're seeing the work pay off, and they're seeing and they're believing in you, and the community's believing in you. How do you temper that enthusiasm, knowing you know you've got a lot of games ahead of you? Well, and I think that's the biggest thing right now. We have to focus on each week. And, uh, you know, one of the things when you're selling what you're going to do and the type of things you're going to do is it's fun for kids. I mean, you know, they're always sending videos. Hey, coach, we can do this. Or, hey, <laughs> you know, we can do that. Everybody's, in our Everybody's a coach, you know, right? Yeah, so, you know, so it, but it's fun and, and you like that. And so, you know, what? Coach Mock taught us all those years ago when kids come to practice, you get to throw the ball around and do all those things. It just makes practice even fun. So to be able to do that and for the kids to buy in, and it's just been a great start. Um, we're still laying the foundation. Um, last year we laid the foundation a little bit and we're starting to build on it. Um, but it's been a great start and uh, just excited about how things are going. Coach, the spread offense, obviously everybody knows how prolific it can be moving the football, the points that you can put on the board. You see some schools that will go to the spread, though, and they struggle because, in my estimation, they put the wrong kid at quarterback. What are some things that you have figured out that you have to identify to put the right kid at quarterback? Well, I think, you know, he's got to have the leadership skills, and that's what we continue to talk with Janias about all the time, you know, not just on the field, but how he practices, how he is at school and things like that. And he's growing into that role and doing a great job. He's now starting to tell the receivers when they're not in the right place and, and all of that. Last year as a sophomore, he kind of laid back and let kind of the seniors kind of lead that. But now he's starting to take the charge of that, and he's starting to understand because we told him, I mean, you know, I always told him, me and him got to be tight because they're always going to blame two people when we lose. It's the, <laughs> the coach's fault and the quarterback's fault. So we, me and him have to have a great relationship. And we you do. need a friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's always going to be our fault, you know. And uh, but, uh, but with that, you know, a lot of times the quarterback gets a lot of the accolades too as well. And, uh, you know, when you're scoring a lot of points and doing those things, everybody talks about your offense. But, you know, our defense 
is really getting better each week, and uh, we've got a really solid defense as well. Coach, have you have you started implementing your system in the junior high levels and the JV programs? Is everybody running the same thing? That's what's exciting, you know. Yeah. Down to the seventh grade, um, our seventh grade's undefeated at the point. They're running five wide. They've got a really good quarterback and a good crew of receivers, and they're starting to love that. Look at that smile! That you game. can see yeah. it. he ain't going nowhere. Yeah. No, no, no. And uh, our eighth graders are running it as well. And um, so, you know, our JVs, uh, they're uh, undefeated as well. And uh, they're total five wide, our same defense, all of that. So they're doing our line calls. They're doing everything. So, you know, it's been good because now that maybe those juniors that aren't playing are getting molded and getting some great reps because we're able to play a full uh, varsity JV and freshman schedule. So we're excited about the numbers we're having. I was at a coach's clinic years ago, the air raid offense with Hale Mummy. He was talking, and he said they look at film of their opponent a little bit differently. You know, most people watch film, and they say, okay, how are we going to stop them? He would look at it and say, how are we going to score 49 because we don't think they can score above 49 or we can score 40. When you're watching film and you're watching your opposition, you say, we need to get to this number because we don't think they can score. Well... I don't want to give chalkboard material to right, people, right, but, right, right, right. but uh, one of the things, you know, one of our goals last week was 70 points and 700 yards. That was our goal last week. Great and we, goal to have. And we did not meet our goal. Um, and we felt, you know, with our turnovers that we had, you know, if we would have took care of the football and did the things on our end to be better, because we're not just preparing for the TCAL. Um, we want to make a run in week 12 and week 13 Great and 14. Point. Love that. And so with that, you know, going into this week, we have that same goal. And that's not to ever, you know, put a team down or, or do anything where it's not sportsmanlike. But we set the bar that we want to be operating at a high level. And uh, so the kids know that. So we watch film today and... You know, with 600 yards of offense, you'd think it'd be a, a party in there, and it wasn't. We did a lot of things on film that we've got to get better at. Coach, you talked earlier off the air, you talked about Boogie Wilson and, and his accomplishments, three touchdowns in the first two games, three touchdowns Friday night, and you talked about the colleges that are coming. Do you, do you believe that the system you run invites college coaches in? You know, I mean, then when they look at those numbers, it, look, it, it, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> well, and it makes them, it makes them you know, Take that extra look like, you yeah. know, what kind of player are they? What, what you know, man, he's putting up these numbers. Let's look at him. Because last year what was crazy is, you know, he was going to be recruited for his speed and as an athlete. And now that he's playing all offense, you know, he said when he was at Youngstown State this weekend, the defensive coaches had him at first. And then as soon as the receiver coach saw him, said, you know you're a receiver for <laughs> us, right? So they're already starting That's to That's a pretty good problem. Arms. That's a pretty yeah, good problem so, to have. You know, and, and, and Boog's – you know, he's a great young man. And uh, with that being said, he just told him, they asked him, hey, where do you want to play? And he said, I want to play football. So uh, with that answer, answer, you know, yeah. that was a great Listen, answer. I, I yeah. can tell you, you know, I, I get to walk the hallways. I, I get to talk with Bug. Um, it couldn't be a nicer, more humble kid. All of this success, everything that's coming his way is through hard work and it's well deserved. But you wouldn't know he's getting all this attention. I mean, he, he's a great kid. He's been very grounded which is hard to do because, like I said, I walk the hallways over at Lima Senior. Expectations are high. There's a lot of talk about what not just next week should look like, the rest of the season should look like. The whole city's talking about and, it. You yeah. know, and, you know, I know as a coach, it's one game at a time, one week at a time. We're not looking to anywhere. we got to play who we're playing this week. How are you tempering those expectations within the program? Because at the end of the day, they're kids. They hear the same stuff that the rest of us are hearing. How are you trying to keep them focused just and just go week to week right now? Well, I think we talked at staff meeting yesterday. How are we going to find ways to motivate our kids when they know, you know, they all are part of social media and they see where projections are and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, how do you temper that? And we just continue to talk about if we want to reach our goals, we got to continue to get better. And that means also in the classroom as well, you know, because we have our grade checks coming and all those things that can, you know, sometimes, you know, set us back a little bit. So we've got to focus in all those areas because, you know, with success, you know, you know, things start to, you know, you can start to believe what everyone's telling us. And right now we've just got to continue to get better and, and worry about us and not so much everyone else. So that's what we're trying to focus Coach, on. Coach, 3-0 and this week, next week going, or this, excuse me, this coming week, Sylvania Northview, what do we know about them? What do you got to do to get the victory? Well, you know, they're a part of a very good program. Um, being a part of the NLL, they play in the big division. So what I told the guys today is, you know, they're used to playing schools 
like us. So it's nothing for them to line up against us or whatever. And it's their home opener. Um, they're expecting a big crowd. I know they haven't had success that they'd liked in the first three games, but you know, going on the road and, and all of those things, we've got to be ready to go. And uh, you know, they're trying to find their identity, and, and uh, they're going to try to point out things they can do to us. Maybe put pressure on us a little bit and find ways that find kinks in our armor. So, you know, we're looking forward to a good game Friday night. Now, I love the mindset that you had. You guys are talking about week 11, 12, 13, 14. That's a great mindset to have setting those goals. Weather changes in November, right? You guys are a spread offense. Everybody says well, it's tough to throw the ball in cold air. Football's harder. What are some adjustments you guys make when the weather changes? Well, we just we have, we always teach our guys no matter what the weather is we can throw the ball. So when it's raining, when it's raining we'll take buckets and dip balls in and the quarterback in the center will snap wet balls and we'll throw and catch them and do all that. We'll practice in the rain. Now the older I get, I kind of don't like to be out in that too much. But, <laughs> I don't blame you. But, uh, but uh, at least that sounds good anyway. <laughs> it's the right answer. It depends, depends on how cold it is. But, but uh, no, we just we just we don't make excuses. I mean, this is what we believe and when you believe in what you do you teach your team and you teach your kids that there's nothing that stops wind rain we go now the good news is uh we can line up as i've shown in the wishbone a little bit Love and throw it. people yeah. off you know that's, 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 that's what i was gonna say i was like they're not one we can run the ball when we need to and uh so that's we toy around with that a little bit. I think we're even doing a little T formation this week. I don't know. Hey, all right. <laughs> well, that's what you, you know. You talked about that coming into the season. You you didn't want to be predictable. You wanted teams to not just be like, all right, well, we got to figure out how to stop the spread. You wanted to be more dynamic and, and show different looks and be able to do other things well. And you guys have done that. You come out week one. You know, you show the wishbone. That was a, a big success. Surprise, surprise. Book Wilson was your leading rusher in that game. You know, he lines out wide. He's your leading receiver. You know. It, it, it's been very impressive to to watch the product on the field. But, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't, since I have some insider knowledge and in all of this stuff. You know, Coach, a lot of stuff that gets lost in, in programs is the stuff that happens off the field. And when something bad happens, it gets a lot of attention off the field. But when good things happen off the field, it doesn't get nearly the attention. Yeah, that's a good point. And what you have been able to do off the field with these kids, numbers are up eligibility is up drastically the turnaround just within the program for the things happening off the field in my mind has been more impressive than what you've done on the field one I, I remember when I was interviewing one of the biggest thing we want to build our program on is relationships and uh, our staff does a phenomenal job with that so you know f from the day we started you know we made the rule if you need a ride we're gonna make sure you're there and you call and uh, that's from a Boog Wilson to the freshman who's mm -hmm. just learning. Um, so we have kids every day that call and, and uh, we're just teaching them about life and we're loving on them. And that's the biggest thing is, you know, I even said in the interview, you know, I'll overlook X's and O's. Now you got to have X's and O's, but I'll, I'll get to the relationship coaches because we got to build relationships and love on kids. And then once you've done that and you build a relationship, then they will just get with you and, and run through walls and, and go and compete and, and do the things that we're doing. So, you know, I knew it didn't sound like a great interview answer, you know, when I'm in there, but, <laughs> I love it. but like, I like and, it. and, you know, and they asked me, well, how do you do it? I just love on kids and I, mm -hmm. I, I love, love being around them and love doing what I do. And, and I want our staff to do that. And our staff is taking hold of that. And, uh, you know, we're having some success and we just got to keep it rolling. I think that's the hardest thing to answer when people are like, well, you know, well, how do you build a relationship with a kid? Well, I can't tell you that. If I could right. tell you that, I'd make a trillion dollars writing it down and teaching people. It's just one of those things that you have to know your kids. You have to be all in, invested and all in. And then you figure it out that way if you have that skill set. And you have done a tremendous job of putting people in that program uh, adult wise who can do that exact thing. Yeah, you know, we were blessed. You know, my first year was that we took um, five or six guys came with me from uh, where I was at. And, uh, you know, and then we had five or six coaches from Lima. And then we combined together. And just to see that molding together and us coming together as one, you know, now it's not, hey, five or six coaches came from here and, and five or six coaches, we are Lima. And, uh, and uh, so it's been, it's been great. And uh, our coaches do a great job. And they were preparing today and just going to town, getting ready for Northview. 
So I, I love that. That needs to be a shirt. We are Lima, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's awesome. Yeah. On the back of a shirt, that is great. Yeah. Coach, you were a head football coach earlier in your career, right? Um, what what did you learn? You took some time off. You were an assistant, right? You were a head football coach you're, as an assistant. Now you're a head football coach. Go back and compare yourself as a football coach then to now. What did you learn? What do you like about yourself now compared to then? Well, I was really, really young when I was back back then. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, but, you know, I did learn a lot. I was at a small private school in, in uh, Florida, Lake City, Florida, and, uh, you know, had some good teams and, and uh, you know, had some fun. We were low numbers, so, you know, I learned. But it was even back then it's always been about relationships yeah. and, and with kids. And, uh, so, you know, then I moved back to my hometown and to be under a uh, Hall of Fame coach and Mike Mock and just to learn and glean, right. glean from him, you know. So all the questions he got all those years, well, can you can you throw the ball in the snow and this and that? Well, you know, three state championships or shows you four or five uh, mm-hmm. state runners up and different things like that and you know and then to be with coach Fackler and you know a lifelong assistant of coach Mock I mean just to to be and learn from those guys and I've just been able I've been blessed to be around great people so um I always love uh, watching coaches and uh, you're a spread guy so are there colleges are there coordinators or the guys in the NFL that you're like oh they're on TV I want to make sure I watch them because they they run the spread extremely well well, I would say there's not a lot of teams that just line up in the five wide right, and, right. and do that. So I'm always looking for concepts. But main, the main things that get me going are the onside kicks and yeah. the two-point plays. Ryan Kelly, yeah. I, I literally try to – how do you say this nicely? I want opposing coaches when they watch tape on us to just think, man, this guy really is annoying. Because <laughs> he does He's so unhinged. many things. Right, you know, right, right. you got to watch that we're going to throw a double pass. We're going to onside kick every time. And I actually had someone come up to me yesterday and said, Coach, could you just explain your philosophy on onside kicks? And uh, want the ball back. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, First off, I'd have a kicker kick it deep, number one. Number two, if we kick it to the 25, then we're going to turn it to the 40. So am I willing to give up seven yards to get it? Absolutely. I'll right. take that every and what's time. what's the philosophy that if you get one, 50%, if you get two, it's 75%? Yeah, it goes, yeah. It goes up, you know. Yeah. And, um, and we got two Friday night. And, uh, you know, you're in a tight game. You score and take the lead. And then you get an onside kick and go down and score. It kind of sometimes can get – and then you think, well – yeah, coach, but you're giving them the ball on the 50-yard line. Well, if they do go down a score on our defense, then our offense gets to come back right. on the field. So, <laughs> you know, uh, but our defensive coordinator, he he understands what we do. He believes in what we do, and right. and he understands, hey, it helps me look good too because they're not going to have that many yards because they only <laughs> get the ball at the 50-yard line. So. Plus, awesome. it's absolutely demoralizing, right? Oh, it's oh. Big time. If, oh, yeah. you, if they recover an onside kick against you, your kids are just shoulders are slumped, and you guys don't go score again, and it's fourteen nothing, man. That's a great philosophy, well, especially especially when you've practiced it all week. Hey, we're gonna not they're not let them get done. They put ten guys up there, and we get two. Right. And what's awesome? What's awesome is uh, we call our special team, our onside kick team, is now called the twelfth man. Okay. And the twelfth man is there's not one starter. On our t- on on the twelfth man, all so right. it's all awesome. of our JV and freshman kids, and we have fifteen or sixteen on that team, and they don't start, and they get excited. Oh, I mean, sure you should have saw them Friday night yeah. when they got two onside kicks, and during practice, what's awesome is our offense will be practicing, our defense will be practicing, and then I'll call the twelfth man, and we'll go work on our formations and onside kicks, and I actually get to coach those guys, nice. and uh, you know, once again, just another way to build relationships. How, but, how many different types of onside kicks you have? Well, going with last year, we have, you know, di- as far as formations, probably right. seven. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. but I'd like to get that to 12. So. See, see, when I was in high school with the 12th man, we only had 12 guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I went to school. Yeah. So. Danny yeah, but was, that's, they were wearing leather helmets, though, <laughs> yeah, too. Right. So. There was 11 on the field, then there was Danny. <laughs> again, again yeah. Yeah. do this podcast. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, all those things are fun and makes it fun for kids. And it's awesome when you can take those guys that – aren't in working on the defense right away you know they're 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 backups but you know they come and they have a part mm-hmm. and i tell them you guys can turn the game by execution mm-hmm. and our kickers i'm i'm really hard on we have one soccer player that does a great job and then i have another kicker and i said you've got one job is to put the ball where i need it to be and uh so we put a lot of pressure on him to make sure he's getting it done and he did a great job emmanuel did a really good job friday and uh what's what's the next step you never punt Go for it on every fourth down. Is that the next we, step? We do go if 
Uh, we, I don't like. <laughs> yeah. we, did not, we did not punt Friday. However, we either yeah, but scored, you're scoring touchdowns. But we, <laughs> but we either scored or turned it over, so that's not good. Do you have a punter? Janice. We, yeah, we, a lot of times yeah. we'll punt out of our offense. Okay. So okay. we'll punt out of our offense, and then they won't put a guy back. So Janice is averaging like 40 yards a punt right now, and he doesn't even <laughs> practice punting. So the only practice punts he gets is in the game before he'll get two or three. Um, but we do have a punt team, and we're ready if we have to get a punt off, and we work on it each week. But I don't like to punt. No, who does? Well, well no. and it's the philosophy, the same thing. You know, you get four downs to get ten. Why would you give one away and just kick it? Especially with that offense, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and, you know, you have to believe in what you do. Mm-hmm. He's Bill Lawrence. He's the head coach from Lima Senior. They're the defending TCAL champs, and everybody at this table hopes he gets another one. Congratulations, Coach. Best of luck for the rest of the year. And thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for all you guys do, and I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your podcast. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Coach. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by Charles River, dedicated to improving life by discovering new therapies and cures for devastating diseases. We are a strong supporter of our local community, as well as educational opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math throughout the Allen County region. Learn more about Charles River at criver.com. Also, Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Hawker Drywall is a family-owned company that is focused on giving every customer the personal attention that they deserve. Utilizing a local workforce, Hawker Drywall is dedicated to bringing a professional atmosphere to any commercial or residential job site and is committed to a safe working environment for its employees and customers. All right, guys, it's one of our favorite times of the podcast, the best thing we saw all week. And Miles put things on there because apparently when I wasn't here last week, Dave went oh, with a bunch of listen, stuff. You yeah. weren't here last week, and the whole format, everything just went out. We went off the rails. It was weird. It, it, you know, nobody to keep us on the track. <laughs> Nate, what's the best thing you saw all week? Um, so mine's a little personal in the fact that um, – you know, this the start of this uh, football season, um, you know, I have a son, he's a senior over yeah. at Shawnee. It's been a little rough injury-wise. You know, week one, he took a big hit, uh, hurt his neck. Thankfully, he was okay, uh, you know, was able to play the next week. Um, and then this past week, uh, last drive of the, of the game, um, he wanted to stay in even though uh, it, was a, it was a blowout. And he hurt his knee. Um, he wasn't able to put pressure on it. It had to be helped off the field. And the amount of outpour that has come from people mm calling, checking on him, making sure he's okay. People that weren't at the game, people that just read about it in the paper or heard it from other people. Um, and I've heard that a lot from a, a lot of people. You know, it, it, the, the amount of support that kids get when they, when they are hurt, whether it's severe, minor, whatever, people calling and checking, um, it has, it's really been – uh, it's really been good for us, for the family, sure. and I'm sure it's, it means a lot to the other families as well. It's nothing crazy. It's not 20 minute conversations, right? It's just a quick text. Hey, right. how's your son doing? Checking Is he in. doing okay? Yeah, he's do- thank you for checking. In. Appreciate it. You know, and those are the conversations. But kids knowing that people care, that it is more than just, you know, a sport and they're just a, somebody out on the field with a helmet, you know, knowing that people genuinely do care about their well-being means a lot to them. And I'm sure it means a lot to the families as well. So that, that really meant a lot. Um, it, it was great to hear from people this week checking in. Um, and I, I really I really thought that was that was pretty cool, especially when I've heard that coming from other places too. Injuries seem to be a big deal everywhere this year. I've seen a lot of injuries, heard about a lot of injuries. Um, it's, it's a part of the game. It's unfortunate, it's but it, it, it just yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, but, you know, seeing that throughout the area for the, for the kids has been, it's been pretty cool to see. But don't be shy. He bought out this week. He had a great game Friday night, didn't he? Yeah, he did. You know, yeah. up until that point, everything was going well. <laughs> outside of getting into the end zone. Things yeah. were going real well. He had 10 catches, 106 yards, first hundred yard game as a, as a, that's, that's a football true. player. Fantastic. So he was super excited about right. that. He's, you know, he, you know, he prefers wins over the numbers, but you know, um, they're looking to bounce back. And right now he's trying to hopefully figure out a way to get himself good enough to play Friday night. So. Okay, so it's a good prognosis then. Yeah, I mean, I think we're looking more about pain compliance or uh, than anything else, you know, what he can play through compared to, to you know, not. But we'll see, you know, we got five days, and we'll see how he progresses. Miles, best thing you saw all week, and this is kind of personal too because I saw I, the show she did. I, I have a bunch, Yeah, actually. you go, yeah, buddy. Yeah, all right, uh, first and foremost, um, college football traditions are great, right? 
I don't know if you saw this, but Oklahoma started a new tradition. Oh, no, I, I did this was see fantastic, this. Fantastic, yeah. right? See this. Started the fourth quarter. They're going to uh, have Toby Keith, and they're going to play his music over top uh, the stadium. Red, white, and blue, shoe. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time yeah, Oklahoma supporter. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought that was really cool, that and they awesome. had uh, uh, Bob Stoops out there to lead it. So I thought oh, that was wow. it's going to be something that they do all the time. Not an Oklahoma fan, but if I was, I'd absolutely love that. I will be rooting for them every fourth quarter as long as they're not playing the Buckeyes moving mm-hmm. forward. Um, another one I had, uh, Trent Barraza at, for Columbus Grove. Um, it, it's kind of an unfortunate thing because uh, uh, Best got hurt, right, oh, yeah. at quarterback. Um, but w- it's okay if you're Columbus Grove because you have a guy like Trent Barraza who just jumped in at quarterback and, you know, he, not a polished passer, not a guy that was ready, you could tell, didn't get a ton of snaps at quarterback, right? But just his leadership and his determination was a, a, able to get things done for them. Hopefully Best is going to be back at some point in time. He's a great qu- Don't yeah. know, but I thought he was great for them. Um, also Columbus Grove, there was a moment in that football game, and, and Nate, you touched on it and how kids care about each other. Uh, Lincoln Krieger, quarterback for Patrick Henry, absolutely fantastic football player, went down, got his head put in the turf, comes up, and he's got a face mask full of dirt and grass, right? And he's, he's like, looking around. You could tell it blind him. Columbus Grove kids grabbed him and took the, the grass out of the helmet for him, said, we got you, buddy. You don't see that very no, often, no. right? No, that, that was, yeah, that was awesome. really cool. And then my last one. Uh, our very own yeah. Kelsey Beimer. Oh. We're watching her grow up in front of our eyes. <laughs> you, you and I are so proud of I her. I know it. <laughs> she called her first football game with Danny on Saturday oh, night. She, she was, did the color yeah. commentary. Danny, uh, she said she let you t- she you let her talk a little bit, which was great. <laughs> we um, told her to be wary of that. Yeah, that was some yeah. of the advice we gave her. I told her I'd give her a few minutes so so, during the game. <laughs> she the, was fantastic. She was the best thing I saw all yeah. week. All that was fantastic. And uh, you said she did a great job. She was fantastic. Fantastic guys! I'm telling you, she uh, she's going to be a star in this business, and uh, everybody in town's talking about her. So, uh, guys, my you ever you ever watch a game and you see a player no. who gets just into a zone, just absolutely gets into oh, a zone. There was more to that yeah, there was more to that question. Yeah, that question. Right, Smart Alec. Yeah, <laughs> three wise men, two and a half. <laughs> Uh, don't, don't, hey, don't, don't sell yourself short, Danny. We think you're, you're tremendous. Pretty we love Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm back in town. I saw a kid Saturday night absolutely just take oh, a game right. over, yeah. and it was the funnest performance I've seen in such a long time. One, Mr. Matthew Quatman from the Lima yeah. Central Catholic Thunderbirds. Nate, you had talked earlier this year about him against your Shawnee team, yeah. and you thought they should have ran him a little more. Yep. Look, be lucky they didn't because this kid well, was explosive. Four touchdowns, yep. three on offense, one on defense, 196 all-purpose yards, 176 yards from the scrimmage. He reminded me, and look, I'm not a Michigan fan, but he reminded me of Blake Corum. Small in stature, but got behind the line, waited for the holes to open, and he was gone. He absolutely was the best player on the field, and he's he's a huge reason why LCC really took apart a, a carry team that was much bigger. Yeah, well, that's why I said earlier, I mean, they had to get him the ball more often. You know, it's it's one of those things where if you're LCC, your success is going to be predicated on Matthew Quatman and how he plays. You have to force him the ball because it's not just one dimensional. It's not, okay, well, we'll give it to him and we'll hand it off and he runs it up the middle. No, they're going to swing him out wide. He's going to be able to, to go one on one with any cornerback. He can beat secondary coverages. He doesn't go down on a first hit if no, he's in the he backfield. Doesn't. No. He bounces. Yeah. He, his pick six that he had on Saturday, I don't know if you guys read the article. I, did. I, I, I have. I, 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 I share, was there. in full yeah. disclosure, I, oh, yeah, good call. <laughs> it, well, no, the article gets into it more, Danny. Yeah. So, I, you know, in full disclosure, I share a uh, hallway with his his dad at work and so okay. he was telling me about it the uh carrie had gotten a play over on matthew early in the game where they had kind of done this weird alignment they had stacked their receivers and and they get a completion and Ma- matthew thought he was going to read he tried it to jump try around it, yeah. and it didn't work and he actually got an earful when he, he got did, to the sideline <laughs> and his dad said that he saw that happen and he turned to some guys that he knows and he goes carrie better not run that again and they ran it again he saw it recognized it took it 40 yards the other way, touchdown. It was just – it was a football IQ play because he saw it, recognized it, remembered it, and jumped it. He – it's no surprise that the last two weeks, LCC has gotten the ball in the hands of Matthew Quatman more, and they've won, they've won the last yeah. two games. Right. 
The other right. thing, guys, I got one more. Um, you know, we take a lot of hits on social media a lot of times because we're, you know, we put our opinions out there and we, you know, we're kind of susceptible to. I don't. Nate yeah, does. Yeah, no, that. I don't. Yeah, Everybody right. agrees yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I got a really nice, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a really nice text uh, from Troy Parker uh, today, uh, Rady Parker's father, and he just appreciated the kind words that we said in the booth about his son and the rest of the T Bird team. And man, that makes you feel good when, when people are listening and appreciate what you're doing. And he said, not only on the field, but the things you were saying about the kids off the field, he said, we appreciate it. Hey, so, that's, it's a quarterback yeah. factory over at the park. Oh, my right. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, yeah. keep having kids, man. Kids fantastic. Yeah, we're going to try to get <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah, sometime. unfortunately, yeah. Brady Parker, the last one in the lineage. So we got to enjoy the fellas Parker quarterback as we're you, coming through. He's going to be a dandy. He throws a he's going to be really a dandy. Well. That's why I said after yeah. week one, you know, he's going to be okay. Like, yeah, he's he's going to be all right. He's a yeah. sophomore. He's going to be all right. I promise you. I don't know if he'll be the runner that his brother was, but he might be a better passer. And the reason for that is, is Carson wasn't built to be a quarterback. Carson no, was their no. running back, yeah, and yeah. then he just turned into the quarterback. So he was never afraid of yeah, running Brady. it and putting that. Brady has been the quarterback yeah. for he's, since he touched the football field, and he's only getting better. He's, he's got, yeah. we keep calling him little brother, but he's bigger than he's Carson six, was. Yeah. Like I mean, yeah, he six, is yeah. going to be. Right. He's going to be all right. Yeah, he's I got promise. A if, I'm, if I'm Scott Palti, though, I'm going over to their house and we're doing the genealogy, right? We're trying to find <laughs> more Parkers. <laughs> we'll have to ask him about that this week, Danny. <laughs> That's the best thing we saw. All right, guys, let's get right into it. Let's preview the upcoming games on WOSN. We've got some really good games this week. Let's start out with Wapakoneta at St. Mary's. Garrett Seawright and Mark Schein will be on the call. Fellas, I'm just going to say this. I was shocked that Defiance upset St. Mary's this week at 14 to 10. You want to talk about a street fight slugfest and it doesn't get easier for the riders they got wapak coming in this game could be for the wbl title and i know there's a lot of football left but these are two heavyweights well you looked at defiance they were zero and two coming in right and you're like are they really going to be zero and three right they just got brez ziffel their quarterback back but i tell you what happened uh, Defiance, Chad Greeway, the defensive coordinator, smart, smart fella. I know you've been high on them all year. Yeah. I, I, I like Defiance a great, G, a great deal. Anytime you play a wing T team, you have to take away the trap first because everything is built off the trap. Guess what they did? Took they the took away. away the trap. Now, the buck sweep was still pretty successful for St. Mary's, but two long runs by Osborne called back. That was a big problem. They also had a kickoff return that was going to go for a touchdown, but the kicker got him to the ground. So it was just one of those nights for St. Mary's where they could never really get themselves in sync. Plus, defiance offensively, third down machine. Anytime they had a third and five, picked it up, able to keep moving the chains. Well, and, you know, I mean, just to more into that, you know, St. Mary's had three drives of 11 plays or more. Yeah. They only came away with points on one of exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that is just things that you don't typically see. One ended in a fumble. The other one was a missed field goal. That stuff is stuff that is typical coming out of a St. Mary's team. They also then gave up 200 yards on the ground to Wilder on the right. other side, right. which just helped continue to bleed the clock. And eventually, and you know, the winning score comes on a, a, a trick play. It's a halfback a pass. Play. Yeah, yeah sure. they, you know, yeah. and you know, hats off to Defiance, but I don't think a lot of people saw that one coming. I sure didn't. I, I thought did, yeah. I, I didn't know that anybody would beat St. Mary's this year with the way that they had started off this season. It might be terrible news for Wapak, though, because now it's it's an eliminator now game. Now we know right? we got to fix. Right. Yeah. And, and St. Mary's knows that they have to win, right? That might yeah. be a problem. Well, and I, what I, I want to know, too, is I want to know the status of Colton Mabry. Yeah. Col, Colton I goes he's out. A game time decision. Yeah, yeah. He goes out in the first half after a big hit, doesn't return. That's a three headed running monster they have over it there. Is. That's how that's been so successful. With him in the second half out, he only ended up with 49 yards on nine carries. You know, Dominic Osborne is still there. Caleb Schmidt had his first 100-yard gain on, game on the ground, but they missed Mabry. Mabry was the leading rusher in that game last year. Right. And now without him there, is this offense going to run this as this similar as it has so far this year? Here's a question for you guys. Is it possible with the WBL the way it is this year, somebody could win that league with two losses? Because you, mm. they're they're, you, they're eating each other alive. You look at Bath the way they played last week. Shawnee's got some big wins. Kenton, Routsy, Lida. I mean, it's so it's here's, just crazy. So the only I I don't think so, and here's why. Because I think that in order for that to happen, St. Mary's has I would say have to beat Walpock this yes, week, absolutely. and then yeah. both of those teams have to then Still find to another, another yeah. loss. I don't know that that's going to happen with how those two teams have played so far. Now. That's why you play the game, though, right? Nobody right. thought defiance. Now, coming into the season, 
a lot of people were super high on Defiance. Yeah. They looked real good. And then all of a sudden, Brad Lost Zeffel goes down. He has a knee injury. He hasn't quite been the same quarterback. They lose to Napoleon. Now it's like, okay, where are they at? Well, that defense is plenty good enough, and they know how to game plan over there as they come away with that big victory. So I think that this week is going to be a big week to, to see where St. Mary's is mentally. I mean, I don't think that's a mentally soft team. I think that Coach Fry will have them ready. But that's a big letdown. You, I don't think there's a lot of people over on that St. Mary's sideline that thought they were going to lose no, to Defiance. No, you're right about that. They may have been looking ahead to this game you know, coming into last week. Yeah. Well, maybe they're looking ahead because they got big plans. Do you think they have a chance to win it if the score gets up to the 30s? Because that Wapak offense is, is outstanding. I, I think if anybody scores in the 30s, it's going to be Wapak, and that means right. it's got to be a win because I just don't know what the offense that St. Mary's runs with the way that they run that. If St. Mary's scores into the 30s, I don't know if there's enough time yeah, for Wapak to score 30. Yeah, that offense is predicated on defensive stops and keeping yeah. the ball, and keeping the clock moving. Yeah. Right? We've seen that for the last exactly. three weeks. Yeah. Game number two, fellas, Lima Central Catholic, who we've talked about quite a bit tonight, and Allen East. You look at Allen East, Jackson Thompson, the junior quarterback, two-year starter. Look, they can they can put up points in a hurry. They took one on the chin. Indian Lake beat them in a, in a really close game. And then you look at LCC. They're 2-1 and one after an 0-1 start. They've got things clicking. Matthew Quatman is just... Just sensational right now. Brady Parker getting better. Look, that defense, that Williams kid in the middle of that defensive line, he's a heck of a player. LCC really playing good football right now, Nate. Yeah, they they are. And, I mean, I think they're finally hitting their stride. The game against Carey, I think, is going to be a, a big carry over Oh, for yeah, them. absolutely. I think that that was a game that they kind of had to have. You know, going into the St. John's game, that's a big rivalry game. Shawnee's a big rivalry game. You know, those were very difficult hard-hitting games going into that carry game that was going to be a bigger team they thought maybe they wouldn't be able to match them physically um carry got that win last year lcc going in and taking that win from carry i think really is going to give them a nice little boost now they're going up against an allen east team that has a, a very good quarterback in hershberger and what he's been able to accomplish he's done a nice job i think that the defense for lcc is going to have their hands full for sure we'll see what the d lion is able to do allen east had a stumble against indian lake this last week they had been putting up big numbers in the first two weeks of the season. So we'll see. I, I think that we're going to get a different LCC team this week, though. Well, we talked about Quatman, right, and how big he has been. But let's not forget that the five guys up front have stepped up their game Fantastic. as well. Also, right? Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, they, they are doing a great job. And anytime you win a game, your big players make big plays. And Caden Falky uh, against um, um, Kerry was yes. fantastic. Remember? Was really this was going to be a different game had he not stripped the ball away at the goal line, right? So – Guys like that, we get those plays, and Nate said it right. You get that momentum. You start to believe you're now two and one, where you might have been one and two. I think this is going to be an easy one for LCC. Uh, well, and honestly, this is the best record that they've had in the last four years. They've started the last three seasons one and or the last four seasons one and two. Well, now they flip that, and this is a game that I don't know that a lot of people thought they were going to have in the carry game. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, game. now they get to start that NWC slate, which doesn't get any easier with <laughs> Bluffton and Columbus Grove waiting right. down the line too. Yeah. It was interesting though. Carry, you know, they throw the interception on a great play by Quatman, jumps the the. Uh, a quick screen outside, and then their first eleven plays after second after uh, halftime was eleven straight runs for a touchdown. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Why do teams that love to run the football say, oh, "Let's throw it a little"? Well, right. Kelsey yeah. and I talked all pregame about Kerry's foundation of running the ball. That's what they've done for years, and they were, you know, the Northern Ten champs last year. And they run, run, run. Their first five of their first six plays are passing, and Kelsey and I are looking at each other, going, oh, "So much for prep work." You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you you just wonder. I mean, I've never. I mean, miles of the three of us you've been the football coach oh we all think ourselves <laughs> like we and do. that's what yeah. you know you just yeah. out you know, get away from what works so well for you sometimes and it's a head scratcher yeah patrick camler and evan skilleter on the call for that one lcc at allen east guys kenton at bath randy roberts and miles holiday be on the call other than the defiance st mary's game i don't know that there was a bigger what the heck when kenton goes into a light and wins 37 to nothing not and kidding. none of us saw that coming. no everybody, everybody looked at that score right and it was like <laughs> is that right we thought was that a typo that it got yeah. it backwards or something? Because this was a Kenton defense that was absolutely mauled by Ottawa Glandorf the week before, just giving up chunks of yardage on the ground. So to pitch a shutout, you're like, what in the world yeah. happened? Now, I am planning to do this game till midnight on Friday because that's how <laughs> many points are going to be scored in this one, right? This might be a 52-49 game because both offenses are absolutely crazy explosive. 
Both teams have unbelievable quarterbacks. Corbin Johnson and, of course, Welch, what a fantastic quarterback he's been for Bath. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, Nate, I talked with Shawnee head coach Shane Wireman today, and we talked for a good 30 minutes, and I asked him about Bath, and he said the one thing that he was not prepared for was their size. He said their jumbo packages on the goal line, and when they ran the ball, he said they didn't have an answer for it. Kenton is kind of a finesse team. Can they handle that size from Bath? Well, I don't, I don't think so. But, um, <laughs> but when it comes down to it, I think I don't even know that you're going to listen. I, I was at the Bath Shawnee game. I called it for WOSN. And what Zach Welsh has been able to do, I mean, I think that this Bath team is, is hugely underrated. They have one loss so far this season. That's a three point New loss Bremen. to an undefeated New Bremen team who has sh- uh, pitched back to back shutouts in week two and week three. I, this Bath offense is good. Zach Welsh is leading the Western Buckeye League in passing yards. Four players from Bath are in the top ten for yep. receiving it's for exactly the Western you know, Buckeye Coach League. Weirman said, they, it, yeah. you can't just take away one person. Like you can't even when you spread it out. Sometimes it's well, there's some other guys, but it's one focal point. It doesn't matter. Whatever you give them, they take, and that's what happened against Shawnee. It didn't matter what Shawnee was doing. They just found the one guy, whether it was soft coverage, whether it was a slant, they gave up big plays all over the field, and Shawnee just didn't have an answer. And then they'd hit a 55-yard play, they get down to the one, they line up in their jumbo package, and boom, it's a score. But Kenton can do the same thing. Now, Kenton's, it's interesting because they may have found something accidentally (laughs) because they lose their starting running back. They have to move their thousand yard wide receiver to back to running back. Ain't too and bad. He's Deasley. a pretty good athlete. And yeah. then he, all yeah. he does is rush for almost hundred yards and yeah. a touchdown. They 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 put two freshmen and they start relying on them. All those guys did was catch eighty and sixty yards. Fantastic kids. I mean, all of a sudden Ken's like, oh hey look, this offense is well, moving pretty this. good, <laughs> right. and we don't need to have right. one focal point for being Beasley. We can spread it around too. So now you've got two teams that have multiple options all over the field. This is a very interesting game. I do think though that Bath is underrated, and I think that they 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 are going to surprise some teams moving forward in WBL. Corbin sure. Johnson does as well as anybody in Northwest Ohio at creating extra time for his offense. Right, yeah. he is such he, a good quarterback. He does a good job in that system. He, the first uh, read might not be, be there, and then he just moves and slides and finds somebody open. Now. If you talk about the way that Kenton wins this game, Jaden Mustin, the sophomore linebacker, is going to be fantastic because if he is not, that means that Bath is able to run the football and be able to throw the football, and they're dictating terms. Mickey Hale, is there a a better, quicker guy reading his cutting and going in Northwest Ohio than him? Well, and what makes him so dangerous is, you know, I I told you there's four guys that lead the Western – or in the top ten, right? Mike Yale's one of them. Yeah, he's a right. running back yeah. <laughs> because he can catch it out of the backfield as well, so you always have to account for him. I think you're right, though. I think the, those Kent linebackers have got to be on their game because what Zach Welsh does so well is when that pressure comes, he steps up. And the problem is is you have to send your linebackers back in coverage because right. of all the guys that are going out for passes. Zach Welsh is a big guy. He makes guys miss. He runs through arm tackles. And, he, I mean, he, he rushed for over 100 yards on Friday night against Shawnee. He can do that again against Kenton if they let him. Or, or you go attack him, right? Yep. But when you attack him, you better get there. Yep. Randy Roberts on our own. Miles Holiday on the call for that one. Game four, guys. Pandora Gilboa at Lipsy. Pandora Gilboa gets a big win. They needed one really bad. A rough start. Boy, they've had a murder schedule, but they beat Van Buren 41 14. I'm going to ask you guys this about Lipsy, not Pandora Gilboa. Is any program last year lost more skill players than Lipsick to graduation? I mean, they <laughs> lost a ton of production. Still two and one. Both teams got a win over Van Buren, so we can compare that a little bit. Yeah, it shows you what a good uh, coach Joe Kirkendall is. He's right? very yeah. good. He's yeah. really good. Yeah, he, he, he is one of those guys that will never put a square pig into a round hole. Right? He yeah. is going to whatever our kids can do. I, I saw this game last year, and he used three different kids at quarterback to beat PG. Yes, yeah. Right. So he's going to try and find a way what fits his talent. Don't know if he's going to have enough this year to do that, though, because Pandora Gilboa had them week one with you, Danny, on 93 yeah. one. The fan, we saw Andrew Miller and we saw Ben Burkholder, and we're like, we should, pro- they should probably run them a little bit yeah. more, right? I love Andrew Miller. Yeah, I think Andrew, he's tough, physical. He yeah. is a tough dude. I yeah. think they found their philosophy that they got to have to move forward and got a victory that way. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a good matchup. I haven't had a chance to see either one of these teams too much outside of some of the Columbus Grove Pandora game. I haven't seen Lipsick at all this year, you know. But Lipsick, um, you know, it's been a weird. Um, uh, 
journey for them, I guess we yeah. can put that over the last, sure. you know. Change in conferences. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, and all, yeah. all the kind of changes that the school goes through. Um, I think people were expecting a little bit more out of Pandora this year. Um, I was a little surprised at that lopsided victory they against Columbus They lost some great Groves. guys on the boundaries, They, 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 they did. did. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, th- I think they're starting to kind of find their way back, and I think this is one of those measuring stick games to see. It's a hey, rivalry where, game, where, yeah. Yeah, where, where are we, and, you know, can this kind of launch us through the rest of the season for yeah. both teams, really? Lynn Pissette and Dar never go on the car, call for that one. Game five, gentlemen, the Harden Northern Polar Bears at Waynesfield Goshen. Myself and Darren Gilbert will be on the call for that one. Guys, Waynesfield Goshen lost a huge game to Upper Side of Valley in triple overtime. They also lost Carson Barnes. We don't know the status of him yet. I talked to some kids today in the hallway not real sure if he's going to be able to play uh this is a big time game right now we know what jerry cooper is going to do he's going to run the ball that's what hard do. yeah guys Harden northern's averaging 30 points a game they get that they they score the football this is a really really good game you know hard northern's coming in wanting to knock the defending champions off what say you nate yeah i mean coach cooper has found himself a running game surprise surprise you know, <laughs> uh, 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 you know it, it's not been a shock but the numbers that nolan hobson is putting up right now on the ground. It, I mean, it's just mind-boggling what they've been able to do. They had a stumble week one against Arlington, but since then, it has been nothing but smooth sailing for those guys. Him and Xander Wilson have done such a great job. Um, it'll be interesting. You know, I'm talking about a Waynesfield Grossman program that not used to losing, right? 24 sure, state right. regular season wins. You know, a big rivalry. That is an emotional game. It's not like you just lost either, right? You, you got blown out. Yeah. A triple yeah. overtime game. Um what's that mentality going to be like? You know, for coach, I think I think maybe the advantage that they'll have is that they have a new coach, right? So for Coach Summers, he hasn't been invested for 24 straight regular season right. games, right? For him, this is just going to be week four. Hey, boys, this is a loss, and we have to move on. It's going to be how can he rally those players who have been in that program for three or four years that don't remember what it's like to lose in a regular season game, especially to upper side of the valley. Yeah, well, if I'm Waynesville Goshen, i got to tell my kids, look, this is an elimination game. We lose a second conference game. We're pretty much so out of it. Point. Yeah, because yeah. Upper Side of Valley is probably not going to lose to anybody else in that league. Yeah. Maybe Elgin. Hard Northern is going to play a factor. And here's the other thing. If Hard Northern gets a win, they're right up there with the Upper Side so, of Valley. Uh, Rams. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. you got four teams right now tied at the top of the NWCC to, at sitting at 2-0. and Hard Northern being one of yep. them, USV, Elgin, and Ridgemont. You cannot go two games down in the conference standings. No. You yeah. you have to be able to come away with this win if you're at Waynesville Goshen and, and you know at least give yourself a chance because you're still having to hope for a stumble out of two teams. I mean, I, I know that they don't get a lot of coverage around here, but if you look at that Elgin team oh, and yeah. what they're Coming doing, that is an yeah. incredibly difficult team right now. So it, it'll it's a big game for both teams. Hard Northern trying to take on the identity of Coach Cooper in his second year and get things going right over there in polar bear country. Mm -hmm. And if you're Waynesfield Goshen, you still want that third title. You're not ready to give that up quite yet. There's there's the little voice that Coach Summers has to battle this week. The little voice that's in the back of each player's head. Well, we didn't lose when Coach Weirman was here. We didn't run the wing tee when Coach Weirman was here. We played this style of defense. And then there's that little voice in the community because there's always those people. Oh, yeah. You know, Coach Weirman would have done this. Coach would have done that. You know, when I played, we did this. Now, Coach Summers, veteran football coach, I have no doubt he knows how to deal with that. But if he wins Monday and Tuesday with that little voice in kids' heads, they'll be able to refocus and get this shot. win. Yeah. yeah. Game six, gentlemen. Nate Garlock and Evan Skillet are on the call. Bluffton at Delphus Jefferson. Guys, I'm just going to say this. Bluffton is coming out to me as one of my top five teams we're going to talk about later. Mm-hmm. They are just destroying the competition. They look focused. They look like they – well, no, I'm just going to say it. They are on a crash course with Columbus Grove. Delphus Jefferson really struggling right now, and I think those kids right now are playing that game. Miles, are we ever going to win again? Delphus yeah. Jefferson uh, got a victory earlier because they forced nine turnovers, yes, right? Yeah. Um, I think they have to force nine turnovers again uh, this time if they're going to get it. <laughs> yeah. They get Bluffton. Yeah. Look, Bluffton has got just way too much speed. Yeah. Um, maybe in a year or two, when Jefferson has got this program built up, this will be a matchup. But I don't see Bluffton slowing down much here on Friday night. Yeah, yeah I don't either. I mean, I, I was. Uh, uh, I will freely admit I was wrong in all of my preseason takes for Bluffton. I was worried that this wasn't going to be the same team, that they had graduated too much. Yeah. They had an injury. They um, proved us all wrong, didn't they? They had an in- <laughs> injury to that defense that you weren't sure if they were going to be able to overcome, and that hasn't slowed them down 
even a little bit. They have been just as dominant, even defensively. They've been up one touchdown all year long. This is a Bluffton team that going into the last week of the season had yet to give up a point in conference play right, right before they hit Columbus Grove in uh, week 10. This defense is phenomenal. It's super impressive. Delphus Jefferson is still learning. You know, Rody's a good quarterback. Coach Pullman is a good coach. He he has shown that he can get these guys ready to go. They have a nice win in week one against North College Hill. Um, It's now can we – Stop this from snowballing on us, right? They, they've they had a couple of lopsided right. victories, a tough loss this last week against Paulding where all they mustered was a safety. Yeah. Um, is it, okay, can we stop this from rolling downhill on us and getting bigger? Or when we have Bluffton, who just got done putting up 63, 65, whatever it was against, against Ayersville. <laughs> last year, this game was a 63 to nothing loss. Like, yeah. do are these kids coming in with this defeatist mentality of, well, they're just going to th- – put 60 we're gonna get to a running clock and it is what it is or it's you know what no let's go out and let's show that we can at least play and even if we don't win this game that we can put up a fight when you're building a program you you try to teach the kids one quarter at a time let's just win the first quarter we might not win the whole football game but but if we're in this after the first quarter now let's win that second quarter right that's what jefferson has to do they have to just find a way to stay in the football game in that first quarter yeah bluffton and delphus jefferson nate garlic and evan skilleter on the call Today's podcast is brought to you by Charles River, dedicated to improving life by discovering new therapies and cures for devastating diseases. We are a strong supporter of our local community, as well as educational opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math throughout the Allen County region. Learn more about Charles River at criver.com. Also, Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Hawker Drywall is a family-owned company that is focused on giving every customer the personal attention that they deserve. Utilizing a local workforce, Hawker Drywall is dedicated to bringing a professional atmosphere to any commercial or residential job site and is committed to a safe working environment for its employees and customers. All right, guys, a fun segment here for our fifth segment. How's this a thing? We're going to pick something from the sports world that you don't get, and yours truly and the rest of the table here, we're going to try to figure (laughs) it out. The three wise men are going to try to figure this out. I'm going to let you go first, Miles, because this is your brainchild, and I love this game. So I love my Buckeyes, right? Yeah. And I I had a buddy of mine uh, last year say, why are kids wearing two mouthpieces on their face mask, right? I'm like, that is kind of weird, right? But then uh, I'm watching the Buckeyes, and we have guys now with two mouthpieces <laughs> and the crazy thing about it neither one were in they're they just, just running, dangling yeah, they're all dangling. over the place all like kind, it looks ridiculous right? it does and it's not like the small one it's the big giant one that covers the lips and everything and they're bright neon colors and they're just <laughs> running down the field with these things flopping around so how is this a thing well maybe that maybe there's a dental issue maybe there's a <laughs> slobbering issue i a don't know <laughs> you're not saint bernard's danny <laughs> you never know <laughs> You never know. Maybe maybe their mom said, hey, look, if one gets dirty, you've got the extra one right there. Right. And yeah. you know what's going to happen, right? Oh, you know what's going to It's going to be in high school. We're going to see yeah. it in high oh, school soon. Right. Now, here's yeah. what I remember when you guys started junior high football, and you always had that one kid that took the mouth guard and put gum in it. So oh, it stayed yeah. in there all year long. Yeah, that was Nate. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't play football. So. <laughs> and you're like, what is that in your mouth? Oh, it's, it's chewing gum. I'm just Why chewing on it. Yeah. So, so this has got to be like a fashion statement, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's got to yeah. be a fashion statement. Uh, honestly, though, no, I haven't really noticed it. Oh, you haven't? No. Like, so like, it hasn't been. Now it's yeah, all I'm yeah, going to exactly, see. So thanks yeah. a lot, Miles. Like, that, that's going to be awesome. And shockingly, of course, it's not an offensive lineman or a defense lineman, right? It, it's a receiver. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody on camera, yeah. So I got to piggyback off of this because – I had been wondering this all season long, uh, and so this is a great time to bring it up. But my son came home. He he's a sixth grade football player. He comes home. They they go. They need new mouth guards every year, right? Whatever. Okay, so we go get him the new mouth guards, and they come and it says, you know, beware of dog, or you know, it looks like a whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, the words it has yeah, money yeah, on yeah, it, yeah, or yeah, has yeah, all yeah. these things yeah, on yeah, it, right? Yeah, it's right. it's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a new you one. Sound like an old man. It's, but whatever. It's like whatever. It's ridiculous. But there was a new one that came home this this year that I was like, what? What is happening? I can't even handle this anymore. It was, it was a flavored mouth guard, but not like you know cherry or bubble gum. Oh no! It was a sour warhead oh. mouth guard. Oh. 
And I said, I said, what are you doing? He goes, oh, no. I said, you are going to get to through your first practice and you're going to feel Ugh. like you're going to puke yeah. because all you're going to be tasting is a sour warhead for all of practice. What are you? No, no. And I tell you, they are everywhere. These fla- not like mildly flavored, Ew. like it's kind of like cherry like plastic. Like it is a hardcore flavored what? mouth guard. Uh. And guess what? It lasted about two days. And he goes, it made me <laughs> nauseous. I had to get rid of it. And that but, how, but how is this a thing where we're like, oh, kids will want to have fully strong, sour, uh, hot, flavored mouth guards just, while they're working out and running in a 98-degree summer. What is happening? We just Put your mouth guard. It's, it's not meant to eat. It's meant to keep your teeth in place <laughs> so you don't end up with a lot of dental <laughs> issues. But now, yeah, now we know why there's two. One is sour, one is salty. Oh, there man, you there go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We just there you go. So That's what we do here. At it's Wiseman. so yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's absurd. I'm telling you guys, it like is a Taco absolutely Bell flavored absurd. one or a McDonald's flavored one or something I like, like that. It. Oh, yeah, I know you. Grinded. Yeah, because you know what? There's nothing I want more in the middle of my hard workout of yeah. 90 degrees Nate's on a Friday workout. on a Friday <laughs> night. <laughs> What are you laughing about? <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, guys. My, uh, how is this a thing? We talked about this today on the radio show. I, I am very much concerned about this. How is Major League Baseball continuing to go six months out of the year? Every Baseball's year. still going on yes, right Exactly. exactly. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. I said it on the show. I said, look, we start in April when it's 42 degrees and snow and out. Nobody goes to the games. They're losing money. As soon as September and Labor Day rolls around, baseball's not even talked about. We, t- we talked about it on the show today for maybe 15 minutes of the entire two hours. And there's great pennant races. Yeah, and there's yeah. great pennant races. The Indian, or the, excuse me, the Guardians are alive. You know, obviously. Obviously, the Reds yeah, aren't. I, I quit watching like a month ago. Right, the Reds right. Are out of it, but so. all right, but yeah. even even in the ratings, they just get destroyed uh, during uh, football season. It's not even close. Well, the funniest part about all that is they extended their season. Uh, right, it, yeah, like it used to be. Oh, like, like Chad we Spencer said we would that, be yeah. we would be starting to wind down baseball right. season right now. Right. Should playoffs be. right around the corner yes. and now it's like oh no 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 we're, we're gonna play the world series in november yeah. My, now. yeah my whole thing is let's end it sometime in september when the weather in the midwest is still fantastic actually it's the best time of the year for weather in the midwest is september but no we extend it all the way through october well our teams don't yeah <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> some teams, some teams do, teams do yeah. but i just don't understand i know it's money but you're getting killed on the tv <laughs> revenue from September to October. Look, you tell me the last three World Series winners without having the thing. Exactly. Houston, exactly. I think, in one year because everybody's yeah. mad yeah. at them for banging on the trash can. You can all tell Dodgers me. Dodgers because the Rangers, they bought it, right? The Rangers, Rangers yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I did but forget you can about all that. tell me the last national championship. You can tell me the last uh, you know, NFL champion, Super Bowl. It's, look, I love baseball. I love sports. But we're at a time where, come on now, think about it. Shut this thing down mid-September. Regroup. Start it. Maybe late April, the first of May, you can still get it all. You don't need 162 games to decide who's the best team. You don't. No, you don't. And really, the best baseball team wins the World Series, right? It's whoever gets hot in the playoffs. Exactly. That's exactly right. All right, guys, let's talk about some Buckeye chatter. The good, the bad, the Buckeye. We're all going to comment on what was good about the performance versus Western Michigan. The bad, if anything, other than one Will Howard throw, which I didn't see a lot. <laughs> Nate, Nate texted me right away yeah. on that one. I said, Kyle Don't McCord. worry, I got my take. Let's just keep on moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my good, of course, is, oh, Lord, how quick is Quinchon Junkins, right? How good was he? You just give him a little bit of a crease, and he is gone. But there's a reason why that's good. We've been soft on the perimeter for a good while now with blocking on the perimeter. Long runs don't just happen because of running backs. Long runs happen because your skill guys are getting out and blocking on DBs. Mm -hmm. Saw it, Ohio State was getting into guys' grills. That is good for me. Yep, uh, my good is this. Listen, 
you both, you, you guys have had to listen to me oh, no, for a Will month Howard. and a half, it's right? Howard again. It, it's not, no, no, listen, I'm finally happy. This is what I expect he goes in Ohio 10 to State. Start the game, he's finally happy. Know, right? But this is what the offense is supposed to look like. Absolutely. This is what this team was built to do. You come out from the very opening kickoff and you dominate from start to finish. No weakness shown, no hesitation, no blips of mistakes. No, it was d- total domination from start to finish. This is what this team was supposed to look like against teams like Western Michigan, not what we saw last week in the start against Akron. Yeah. And and this this was finally I got to enjoy watching an Ohio State game because you weren't looking at it through the lens of there's no way that this team what I'm watching is going to be any different than what we've seen in years past. Yeah. After this game, that looked like a different team than we've seen I in said years on the past. Radio show today, and you probably agree with me. I think it's the most complete game we've played in the last five years. Agreed, one hundred percent. Yep, guys, my good is maybe what is becoming really apparent to a lot of us. Jeremiah Smith is different. He is absolutely maybe. I look, Emeka Abuka is the senior leader on this receiving squad. But I don't know that he's better than Jeremiah Smith. How do you think Abuka feels knowing oh, that he's the decoy to get Smith oh, open? Like I know. we throw the under the underpasses to Abuka so Smith yeah, can go we, deep for all the We long haven't balls. seen anything like this since Chris Carter. I mean, we've we've had great receivers. Th- this is different. Th- this, this you can watch him in in and out of his breaks. You can watch his catches. He ran away from the defense the other night. Like you, mm-hmm. you, you hear college coaches talk about when they go to high school games, they watch kids and they watch the acceleration going away. Did you see what he did? To the Twenty-one point seven miles. It was ridiculous. Jeez. It was ridiculous. He is becoming my, one of my favorites, and he's so humble. He says all the right words, and I love the way that Ryan Day is not shying away from saying we have to get him the ball. He was so fast. He was almost at the same speed as Tyree Kill going around a Dolphin Stadium. <laughs> Being oh, chased my by gosh. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and my bad. Well, I mean, police were going faster. And my bad was the crowd. Oh my gosh! By the middle of the third quarter, it was oatmeal night at Saratoga Springs. That was—it was like everybody sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> When's the Jello? <laughs> right. It was. I had, I had a buddy that was at the game, and he's like. I, you, you could have heard me scream across the field to somebody, <laughs> and it was so quiet. But you know, it's a good problem to have. But yeah, that was I mean, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take that bad every single time. Right, right? right yeah, exactly, we're, exactly. We're that position to a pulp, so there's nothing to be uh, too excited about. My bad is targeting. Um, I, I just thought it was absolute crime that Denzel Burke had to leave that football game the other day. Yeah. Uh, to, at some point in time, intent has to be part of it, right? He, what everybody missed, especially the officials, is Burke was pushed into the guy. Yes, he was, he was. pushed from behind, mm-hmm. and so he is trying to tackle appropriately. But you you can't account for my body movement if I don't know if I'm going to be pushed right. Yeah. And so when you're pushed, you go forward a little bit, and you hit him with the crown of his head. Now, now was it a malicious hit? Was it a intent that I'm going to knock this guy out? I think that's got to be part of that discussion. Has to yeah. be. Guys, got to be smarter than this and say that guy is out of the game for the rest of the time. Because what if this was? What if this was a national title? semifinal game oh. and a guy comes flying in the back corner of the end zone and knocks out your star receiver oh wait that did happen oh, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that so did. the only thing that i'll say devil's advocate part of that is denzel burke has been i mean he's a fantastic db he knows that i mean if you're looking at the ground and you make contact up high you're probably gonna get flagged for targeting even with getting pushed, his head still needed to be up. When they and again, you had you had to slow it down, and I think that's where things start to get. You know, when you can when you watch it in real time, and Absolutely. it's you're good. But when right. you slow it down frame by frame, right. and now you do see his head dip, and you see the, the top part is down, and that's what makes contact. Right. Uh, yeah, the I mean, I mean okay, the letter time. of the intent was or the by the letter of the law, I guess. But I mean, it it was it it was a pretty crazy call. I mean, it, it, it really was, was. especially yeah. when the Dean Blandino. Too many, we have way too much time with the, these official yeah. experts, right? Now yeah. they're in every Dean's booth. like, oh, this yeah. is clearly not a not a targeting, right? And yeah. then they come out, no, oh, it's it targeting. targeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, officials should not be able to watch it in super slow motion, like it's a Sapruder film, right? Because yeah. you can t- talk yourself into anything yeah. if you slow if, it down. Enough. If you can't see it at full speed, or even let's go half speed and be like, yep, that's exactly what it is, then 
you shouldn't be able to overturn it or confirm it, and you should have yeah. to move on. And my uh, the well, can I do my bad, oh, yeah, or do you yeah, just yeah. want to skip? Yeah. Listen, uh, for, I, I, it's called yeah. three, oh not two wise men and I me. I forgot. I had, I'm looking at my paper here. Go ahead. Well, I hear we what didn't you have, have these errors last week. We didn't. No. Like you know, we well, ran pretty like a smooth <laughs> engine. You got them now. You got them now. So my bad is one Will Howard throw that was so bad. It was rough. It was, it was so bad that the AP had no choice but to drop Ohio State down to number three. <laughs> that, that one throw was so horrible <laughs> that they're like, that's it. You're going from two to three. <laughs> he is the whole reason we dropped down into the rankings because that throw was so bad. Unbelievable. How about that, though? You give up six points all year and you drop – he dropped it's to third. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I can't believe that. But it's Will Howard's fault. It's fine. <laughs> I hope Will Howard has to save you someday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what? And, you know, hey, 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 hey but in all, in all fairness, he'll come up short. Oh, Nate's going to have a swimming pool someday, <laughs> and Will Howard's going to be there, or he's going to do the Heimlich maneuver, and, and he's going to have to help and, Nate. And he'll allow. come up a little bit and short. And he'll yell, no, that's Nate Garlock. Yeah. And he'll go, oh, yeah, that guy. Never well, mind. here's what will happen. <laughs> Nate will, or Will will go to do the Heimlich, and because you're working out so much, you'll be sweating. He'll yeah, that well, that's probably why they'll have to save me is because I'll have worked out for the first time in eight years and have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and my V is the running game, guys. They really got it cranked up, man. I was super proud of the offensive line and the running backs, and I said it on the radio today that James Peoples is going to be an absolute star, that three-headed monster with, with Judkins and Henderson. Man, I'm telling you, I don't care if it was Western Michigan. Those were kids across the defensive line that were all offered Division One scholarships to a lot of schools. They chose Western Michigan. I'm telling you, man, this running game, when it gets going in this offensive line, that's the one thing that I think when it gets on par with the other position groups – going to be great yeah yeah that's a great call Seth McLaughlin I think uh, is oh he's fantastic part, yeah, uh, yeah for the running game um my V actually goes to uh, Chip Kelly I thought um his game plan was just absolutely insane um I count formations because I'm a football weird guy right um 12 different formations in the first quarter alone uh, personnel groupings um for the first time I can ever recall four tight ends in one grouping which was absolutely crazy yeah. Orbit motion, uh, zoom motion, motion just to motion. Uh, you cannot find out where guys are. Now, I will also credit the players because you have to be very smart to line up in 8 million different spots, right? Mm -hmm. So that speaks well of Jeremiah Smith's intelligence, yeah. right? Yeah, He's not sure. a guy that, who's just a guy that can run to go and you put him outside and say you're going to run fast every single time. They move him around. Chip Kelly was absolutely fantastic and let's hope the rpo that will howard used in the first quarter it was amazing how yeah. quick he's making those reads if they can stay with that same tempo in and out making first downs big explosive plays watch out it's gonna be fun yeah especially if he can like make the throws like we're right, just gonna be right, incredible right, right, right um so i kind of want a different a hater. <laughs> So I kind of went a different way with my my the Buckeye because there's so there were so many good things offensively, including Will Howard, the running game, the wide receivers. There was so much. I think what gets lost and they, we talked about it, it, it after the week one was the defense, but it was as a unit, not necessarily individual. I went with Jack Sawyer this week. He was, he was Love really him. good. Jack, really Jack good. Sawyer. I I think we we had talked prior to the season starting that Jack was going to have to be one of those guys that maybe this team couldn't afford to lose because he helps bring the pressure from the other side to allow JT to be able to do what he can do on on mm -hmm. his side. Sawyer went through week one, didn't get a sack. He tried. He a lot of hurries. It was right. back in the backfield. Finally got through. Got his first sack of the season this week. Had three tackles. Had a sack. Had a QB hurry. And he spent pretty much the whole game in the backfield of Western Michigan. He he played a great game. Um, he really helped lead that D line. And it just is one more thing that is on film now that teams are going to have to that's constantly call, figure out how to how to protect. A also, really it's a, it's is a great time to explain this because uh, my lovely wife Lexi. She wanted to know how Devin Brown played quarterback and played defensive end. <laughs> do a lot of quarterbacks do that? I love your wife. <laughs> so simple. Well, honey, uh, they are wearing the same number. Well, how are they allowed to do that? Yeah. Love you, Lex. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, before before we move yeah. on to the last segment, right? Because I don't know yeah. how I don't know how we missed this one, right? 
it, guys, it was week one of the NFL. We're not going to talk about Browns or Bengals at all. It was so many good things that happened in the AFC <laughs> North. Like we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about how awesome our week one as NFL fans was. Yeah, like really? Man, me, like we're not gonna do that? Why don't you give the good points to the Bengals and I'll give the good points to the Browns? Okay, good segment. <laughs> <laughs> Best thing about week one for you guys, it was over. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy whose team had to be led to victory by say, Justin Fields yeah, in the last minute. Yeah, kicking. you're right. Things yeah. are off to a great start in AFC Six North. Field goals, yeah. Justin right. Fields is the answer forever. But he's got the, the smile. The, that's the that's team. True. That leads the AFC North hasn't scored a touchdown. <laughs> and the team in the basement, we won't score a touchdown. Oh, All right, guys, our favorite time of the uh, podcast, the Power Five football teams in Northwest Ohio. I love this segment because every week it seems to be changing because we got teams in and out and, uh, you know, upsets abound. Yeah, I, so uh, Marion Local. What do they have? Like fifty-one in a row now. Yeah, it's fifty-one. Yeah, they're, fifty-one. Yep. Um, they're the best team in the AFC. Are North. they ever <laughs> going to lose? No, no, no. no they beat no. the Browns last week. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> they probably could. Deshaun Watson was hurt from getting hit by that line. So Marion local, of course. Uh, Wapakoneta. I, I look. I think they are going to be the class of the WL. Now we're going to see that. Uh, we're going to find, right? find out. We're going to find out. You're right. Yeah. Um, cold water. I, I'm sorry, cold water. I had you guys out one week. I, I will not Don't do, do that. that again. I will not do that. Columbus. Columbus Grove. Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Grove. I was texting Andy Coles after finding out about Best and his ankle on Saturday, and uh, he goes, well, it looks like Barrazzo is going to be the quarterback, right? Time to break out the midline and the veer, right? You know, he, he, how do you stop Trent Barraza if you're running an option with him at quarterback? You it don't. Might, <laughs> it might be yeah. a blessing in disguise for them. And then um, – I'm going to put Bell Fountain in there. Okay. Um, best player in the state, best player in the nation. Until someone beats them, I'm going to keep them in, the, in my power five. I like yeah. that. Yeah, for me, um, it's kind of some of the same teams. I mean, look, it has to be Marion Local. There's no reason to for anybody to try to argue that Don't they're fix not. The wheel, I yeah. mean, at 51 straight like we <sighs> talked about. Crazy. I mean, it, and games aren't even close. You know, St. Henry put up a fight up until, you know, halftime and even into that third quarter, and then Marion Local remembered they're Marion Local, and they mm-hmm. ran away with it and won. Um, Coach Goodwin was very complimentary that St. Henry team, though, and how they played, and that was a good dogfight yeah. for them. Um, but Marion Local, um, I have Walpock as well. I have Columbus Grove. I think those are all no-brainers. It gets Then it gets real difficult because you got a lot of teams that are undefeated. You have Versailles undefeated. You have Coldwater undefeated, mm-hmm. right? Um, I had St. Mary's up there you know, with this loss. I still think that they're a really good team, you know, just with a little bit of a hiccup. Um, but I, I went with I put Bluffton into my top five last week. They're staying. There's no reason to drop them. All they did was score. You know, ha- yeah, yeah. I mean, it was easy day. Um, so they're in there. And then I went with New Bremen guys. Nice. New Bremen back to back shutouts. shutouts yeah. they, they, they are a very good team. You know, they don't get a lot of attention because of that conference that they play in and the other teams in that conference. Now we're going to find out about New Bremen this week. Uh, two three and zero matchups uh, over there this week. We'll find out if this is a if this team is for real or not. They're seventeen point um, underdog to Versailles. You know, this is where you're going to find out what New Bremen's made of. But I think right now they're playing as good as anybody right in the area. It'll be interesting to see if they're in there next week. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I got Marion Local, obviously, no surprise, 51 in a row. I had a guy ask me today, he said, how do they do it? And I said, well, they won the state last year, and they brought back 18 starters. I mean, that, that's, it's incredible. It's just incredible how they continue to do that. Uh, Columbus Grove, I, I think that program is – over the last five or six years, they've just continued to build and build and build. And I think they're going to, I really think this is a, a year that they can contend for not just conference championships, but I think they can make a run for a state championship. I think they're that good. 18 seniors. Yeah. I think, yeah. And that's the key right there. Uh, I've got cold water there, guys. I'm not taking them out. I agree with Miles until they play Marion Local. Look, Marion Local and Coldwater are probably going to go undefeated, maybe. We'll see. New Bremen's going to have a say in that. Yep, so I like of, Minster, too. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Minster with, you know, bro, you know, hey, what a surprise that Max really good. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> Who saw that one coming? Uh. I've got uh, Wapak in there. And then my uh, surprise, I took St. Mary's out this week, and I put Bluffton in. Um, I just – I really like Bluffton. I think that they're on that collision course with Columbus Grove. Yep. And, yeah, so. Yep. Yeah. All right. It's, hey, I mean, I know we could probably sit here around here and talk for hours and hours and hours, but I, I go work out. That's right. Are we, are, we, are we good? I got a workout to get yeah, to. Yeah, your uh, uh, we protein just showed up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, guys, uh, what do you say we do it again next week and talk more uh, college, high school, pro, all that stuff? Are you going to be here? I'll be all here. All right, yeah. let's do it. Oh, it's the Three Wise right. Men. We appreciate you joining us. WOSN.